see aphids. A pest's job is to come and eat a plant when it tells it to. Because plants don't talk, but they do send out signals. Um, so, so this chili plant is, I'm watching all the bees, sorry. This chili plant is um, 10 feet tall. I just got a gallon of chili peppers off of it over the last month altogether right now. I get chilies all summer, but this one plant has put out a gallon of chilies. So, so, but now, oh my God, I need to get more, more chilies off the plant because they just, they're everywhere. But, and so people freak out and they're like, oh my God, I have aphids. Well, I have to treat for aphids because I have aphids and oh my God, the world is falling apart. Okay, but wait, 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 wait. Before you go out and buy chemicals or a bullet <laughs> or trip out <laughs> and, and have a panic attack, think about it. A pest's job is to communicate with the plant. The plant says, I need to be trimmed, come eat me. So, so instead of letting the aphids just eat wherever they want, I'm gonna decide where I trim this chili plant. And then after I'm done trimming it, I'll give it a nice good wash. Um, I do have, I do have the aquaponics over there. There's worms in the aquaponics and uh, aphids and, and worm poo don't go together. Um, and aphids lose. So if you don't know what to, what to, this one dude in this page I'm on on Facebook, this aquaponics page, he said, worm poo kills aphids. Like worm castings. And I was like, no way. But apparently he knew this because he farmed worms. So that was awesome, right? So, so now um, I just use my fish water and I wash. And this branch I already cut is just kind of hanging here. Which is cool because then I can show you. But this branch, like look, they're covered. And, and it only seems to be the tips. Uh, the tips, the tips, the tips, all kind of along. But this plant is 10 feet tall. So, it can't be 10 feet tall. I mean, it's nice that it gets that big. And I thank you very much for putting out chilies for me. But it can't get that big. We have to cut it. So, so how I trim it is, and how I decide how I'm going to trim it is, is, okay, so we have aphids. The aphids are eating the new growth. That, that tells me that the plant right now is not going to be able to support putting out all of those chilies and the new growth. And maybe it's just this time of year. But you see how some of them are clustered really, really close together. Like all these branches are really, really close together. There's lots of chilies that came out of all of the spots. Like they're really like condensed, all right? And then you move and, and then you see branches like this that are just kind of sticking out, you see? And then you have this branch here and it's just like it's reaching to try to reach that sun. Well, why don't we get rid of that? And, and while we're at it, we'll go and get rid of all of the parts where we already collect the, the chilies from. And mm, it will be hard to make it perfect um, and, not, and, and not trim it like these have blooms. But we're going to cut this right here. And there's blooms here that we'll lose, which is fine. I don't even care. But we have to make sure that the plant can support its own beautifulness. <laughs> So, so before you get all freaked out about pests, the aphids are just doing their job. Uh, I don't see any ants. Uh, but the aphids, they're doing, like this has a little bit of aphids underneath. Um, the, the hoppers, grasshoppers, have been eating these relentlessly. Um, and so I like to cut off these. Because then the plant is supporting all of this and it's not really doing anything because obviously you're not going to eat this. So you would want to trim that back too. So there's a lot of cutting happening. But when you get pests, there's a reason. Sometimes ants form aphids. But sometimes aphids happen because the plant's not healthy. Sometimes um, 
you know, sometimes, sometimes you just plant the wrong thing in the wrong spot and, and it's like a geographical thing. But if you've been planting for a while and you notice, like last year, this time, I noticed that this plant got aphids. So I did the same thing I'm going to do. And then I hit it with the hose and I was like, washy, washy, wash from the under up. And, and you want to make sure that you give it good space to breathe and all of that stuff. And keep that in mind when you're trimming. You want to trim from the inside. So these vines here like this this vine has no purpose anymore so i'm instead of cutting all of these little stems off blah 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 i'm gonna go to the core of the plant down here and i'm gonna say hey look this vine right here is doing nothing it could come off but can it come off at the fork or can it come off down here so then you have to figure out what this is doing but this just so happens to be a main vine that's supporting the other half of this trellis where it gets direct sun in the afternoon so we're not going to cut that but that's something you'd want to think about you don't want to just leave this vine here if it's not supporting if you're going to be cutting all of these branches off which is what i'm going to be doing so try to make it so you can get from the inside out and fall so like this vine down here doesn't see the sun very often so i'm gonna cut this vine off as well from all the way back there and just cut off that whole chunk you know and and that's how you trim a chili plant man that's how you get a 10 foot chili plant that's how you get gallons and gallons of chilies doesn't matter what kind of chili it is you cut it cut off everything that doesn't see the sun on a regular basis um this section here is almost well, they're maybe halfway through, so I'll leave this for like another week, collect these chilies that are in this area, and then this whole spot right here will just get chopped because it's already put out its peppers. So you can have that vine and, and keep it there. And then the roots have to keep all of that stuff there and the new growth, or you could chop that off and let the new growth sort its way out somewhere else. That is how you get a 10-foot chili. So, um, what else? I did say that pests were okay, right? <clears throat> like, don't, don't. Mm, some people have caterpillar issues. But the caterpillar issues usually happen right around monsoon. And right around monsoon is when my, my tomatoes start to grow. So instead of going out there and trimming them right away, I let the caterpillars this year eat the tomato plants. Um, and that kept them in check. Uh, so now all I have to do is go out there and cut the vines off that have no purpose, which is way nicer. Um, what have I done since I recorded? So yeah, don't trip out about... Um, okay, so don't trip out about pests. Yo, just deal with the plants. If you have pests, it's because your soil is bad or because, like I just said with the chili, you have a too big of a chili and not enough nutrients for the plant. All right, so yeah, anyway, we're gonna fix that and we're not gonna buy anything, we're just gonna cut it. Uh, red Russian kale, lettuce, green beans randomly placed to help things get bigger. Um, we have more green beans and parsley in this whole strip right there, and then we have some onions and some leeks and some dill. Oh, let's get closer starting to sprout they do kind of reach towards the sun so I don't know if they're getting enough sun quite yet I have aphids crawling all over my arms see there's a little aphid ha, now I just spread the aphids to another bed that's how it's done the caterpillars ate a good portion of this plant what is growing back now Um, grasshoppers ate this plant. There's a big, gigantic spider living in there. Mm. Um, I just threw some seeds and wood chips in this area. Here's another pepper plant. Uh, I don't want to go anywhere near any more plants until I wash my arms, though, because I, I can feel the aphids crawling around my skin. Um... This whole area is empty where the beets were and the, uh, the squash are still growing on the vines a wee bit. Um, I'm throwing wood chips now. Uh, before I finish, I will come out here and throw a couple handfuls of seeds. 
This area used to be a fish pond, so there's big old boulders in there because they filled it in. <laughs> Sorry, I have aphids. <laughs> um, the moringa tree is huge. That one I moved, so all the leaves broke. Um, but see, they're regrowing themselves. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Okay, so this is the area. <laughs> That's one basil plant. It's a mint basil plant. That's one area. Uh, that's the broccoli plant. It ain't doing so good, as you can tell, but they ate everything. So you gotta trim that back, too. And look, you see all of this right here? From all the way And underneath there, it doesn't stop growing. That is one eggplant plant. One. And it didn't even matter, there's grasshoppers everywhere. And there's so many flowers, and they're all pollinating. Um, a plant, shiny purple. But the flowers are endless. I've been feeding nothing but fish water for fertilizer. And, oh sorry, and you see there's flowers everywhere. And they're starting to like, and I put wood chips here last week and that made it like triple in size. But they're, 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 this plant is huge. The stem is all the way back there. So, and there's loofahs in here and Malabar spinach. And I found a watermelon. That's not bad. Hold on, let's see. Where is it? I saw one. Oh, there it is. See it? And I didn't even know that was there. And look, there's a loofah. But yeah, not bad, right? Uh, I haven't been getting a lot of double blooms, like twins. It's starting to grow. I put two peppers there. From the yard, they were in the pots. The leaves are a little light. When they get a little light like that, I'll put a little bit extra iron in there. And that's all you have to do. Garlic sprouts. Maybe they're onion sprouts. I think they're the multiplying onions or something. Somebody gave them to me. <laughs> the greens are good. The greens taste like really strong garlic, but sometimes I think that the the bulbs themselves taste like an onion. I don't know what it is, but it's edible. Yeah, that's a whole different discussion.